Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Marche, the webinar director here at Advice Chaser. Before we introduce our guests and get started, I do need to do a little bit of legal housekeeping. Advice Chaser, the host of this webinar, is not a registered investment advisor. We cannot and do not give financial advice. Today's presentation is for educational purposes only and cannot be considered advice for any person's individual situation. Advice Chaser regularly hosts informative webinars, such as this one, featuring a variety of knowledgeable professionals, many of whom are licensed advisors. Any opinions, ideas, jokes, or principles expressed by presenters are their own, and however true, funny, or interesting are not endorsed by Advice Chaser. Please do not act on the information you hear today without consulting a qualified financial professional. Well, we are thrilled to bring you today's educational event, and I hope you will really enjoy our presenter today. Attendees are muted, but we do encourage you to ask questions using the chat box, and the presenter will answer those queries during our question and answer period today at the end of the, of the event. If you ask a question in the chat box and we're not able to get to it, go ahead and leave your phone number and email address. Uh, we want to make sure we address those, so we're happy to reach out to you after today's event if we don't, we're not able to address it uh, during today's presentation. Once again, don't hesitate to ask for clarification or expansion of the material. That is what we are here for. Well, I'd love to introduce you to today's presenter. And I'll just go ahead and get your picture up here. Ellen Delop is an award-winning certified professional organizer and productivity consultant who is recognized for her contributions in the industry and community. She has extensive experience in working with ADHD individuals and holds certificates of study in ADD and chronic disorganization and is a member for, of the uh, Institute for Challenging Disorganization. She works with families as a family manager coach. She is currently the, pa the past president of the National Association of Productivity and Organizing Professionals. She holds a bachelor's degree from Smith College and a master's degree in education from Boston College. Ellen's goal is to power her clients by making a difference in their lives. And we're so happy to have you here. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn the time over to you, Ellen. Well, thank you all so much for joining me today. I'm excited to share tips about getting organized. As we know, throughout the pandemic, getting organized has become one of our most important topics. And so thank you for joining me today to share some ideas with you. So many of the problems, and maybe you're facing these also, have to do with just different situations that have come upon our lives and one of the most important ones is our work-life balance and knowing that work-life balance really hinges on getting organized. Being organized helps you not only make time for the things that are most important to you, it helps you minimize the things that get in the way. Work-life balance has everything to do with um, having the time to do things at our home, having the purpose and meaning for our lives and for our work. And just when we're disorganized, not only do we not have the time that we want to have the things and be with the people that we wanna be with, it also impacts our work and that we're not getting enough done. So if you're feeling like there's not enough work-life integration going on, it could be because you're not quite organized enough. There's lots of transitions that are going on in our lives right now. Those transitions come from some of the catastrophes that have happened. Here in Houston, we've recently had tornadoes and floods and hurricanes. So those live transitions are things that are very impacted by um, the organization we have, but also things that we can make a difference by being a little more organized about our paper and medical and emergency preparedness. Medical challenges are definitely one of the things we're finding as well, not only from COVID, but from other types of medical challenges, such as the increase in all sorts of health hazards, such as cancer and heart attacks, strokes, things like that. So if you're facing being overwhelmed because of one of these life transitions, being more organized is not only gonna help you feel like you're more in charge and being more proactive, you're also gonna feel like 
I can handle this even though it's a really difficult time. Lack of routines are often a very big problem for people with organization. You might be the kind of person that feels like I don't want to be locked into routines and routines are stifling. But in, a case, in the case of organization, they actually empower you. Being more in touch with routines, the routines that have to do with our self-care like exercise and hydration and nutritious eating, but also the routines that have to do with work like when do I do that expense report and what are the meetings that I need to prepare for? So routines are an important part of organization, but just your daily life balance as well. Maybe you're one of the people that unfortunately doesn't have a good handle on your finances because you're not very organized about them. And maybe you're paying your bills late. And so as a result, you're spending extra money on things like late fees and um, other finance charges that have been impacting your overall finances. But one of the most surprising and fun things about getting organized is the amount of money you're gonna find because more that times than not, I find money that are in all sorts of paperwork that are coming into your house. A check that you overpaid, they're refunding you. A gift card that you earned from one of your credit cards. All the different ways money comes to us is often in the paperwork in our house. So we're missing out on the joy of finding extra funds just by being more organized. Maybe it's hard for you because it's really hard for you to find important documents when you need them. Right now we're in tax time and we know that information is coming in every day. It's even labeled on the outside of the envelope, the important tax document. So because it's a lot of stress and also a lot of um, ugly conversations in families about paperwork and documentation, and maybe you're just overwhelmed by the amount of paper that's in your house because you haven't really gotten a good handle on what to keep, how long to keep it, and what's most important. So any of these problems could be a challenge for you, and maybe you want to identify which of them you really want to address by being a little more organized. So of course we have to have a bigger goal, and that bigger goal is the why. Why do we want to get more organized? What is the benefit for us? So some of those have to do with the spaces we live in. You know, when you release stuff and you've edited and decluttered, you just realize how much physically freer you feel and that your spaces can serve you best in the way you've intended them to. Like bedrooms and offices become what they're intended for, restful places and places to keep information. Living rooms and family rooms are places where people come together for community. So as you're editing and decluttering, keep in mind, what did you have the intention of that space to be? And that's a big empowering why, why do I need to declutter it? Sometimes you just want to have easy access to stuff. We live in a very frustrating and uncertain time. So we wanna have as much ease and quickness and agility and nimbleness as we can in finding the stuff that we need and not only putting it, getting to it, but putting it away. So when you're thinking about the spaces you have and the goals you have, think about what's most important and what's most frequently used. We call that point of access in the professional organizer arena. What's being stored at a point of access so it's easy for you to get it and put it away. And then finally, our goals with routines and delegation and automation make it easy to maintain that space. So our goal, and frequently I'm asked this by my clients, if I get organized now, am I going to stay organized? And the answer is yes. And the reason is because you've put routines and automation into place. So routines are like that daily reset that you need each and every evening to get things back to where they belong. Delegation is about building a bigger team. Like who else is going to be able to do this work for me so that I don't need to do it? And then automation is what technology can do this, auto this automatically that I don't even need to think about it. So as you're looking at the goals that you're thinking about for your organization, think about the big why what is the why behind your getting organized? It's so empowering to know why do I want to do this and what motivates me? 
So what are the benefits? We always want to talk about our big why. And many of you, I'm sure, have personal whys about why do the work of getting organized. First of all, we all need to reduce stress. It's such an impact on our health, the kind of stress that we're in. And that stress comes about when we can't find something we're looking for. And right away, just we're just feeling completely out of control. So one of the first benefits is reducing stress. And secondarily, we always want to feel more productive. We want to feel like we accomplished something today. There's lots of statistics that talk about how much time is taken when we have not put something away, we're looking for something, and so it takes time away from getting what we need to do today accomplished. So by being more organized, we're finding we actually have more time in the day. Just that 15 minutes that you're spending on a reset, which is what I say is putting things back where they go, having a home for things, can save you so much time in the long run and give you the time to do the things that are important to you. Not only does it increase your productivity, but it also frees up your bandwidth and gives you time for the things that are most important to you and the people who are most important to you. So it's a really great investment of your time to put in to just doing a little bit of organizing. Now, for some people, that bandwidth can be even for hobbies and things that you never imagined you'd have the time or space to do. So when you think about your own personal why, why get organized, I'd like you to take a minute and just jot that down on something nearby you so you can refer back to it because your big why will not only help you pull into getting organized, it will help you maintain your organization. So think about your why, and I'm just going to give you a minute or so to write that down for yourself. Now keep that why handy, because you want to see that on a regular basis to help you know this is that important to me, that organization can make a big difference in my life. So we're gonna talk a little bit about the different spaces that you might do your organization in. So of course, our home has become everything to us. Aren't we there so much more than we might've imagined two or three years ago? So I do talk about starting with a single baby step. How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. So starting in a single space in your home can be really empowering. It can also help you decide, make decisions that are smaller decisions, or you could go with, I need to set aside a chunk of time that really does service to organizing my entire home. So when you're thinking about spaces and where you want to start, just think about what's going to be the best fit for the time you have and also the energy you have. So one of my favorite things about decluttering, and I think we're all pretty familiar with the different um, strategies that have been Marie Kondo, one of our favorite organizers, right? She says, take everything out, get it out in front of you, get it into categories, and then you can make decisions. And that's one of my favorite things too. So if you find that's overwhelming, just think about starting with what I call the tournament technique. So that is when you have only one decision to make. It's a decision between this thing or that thing. It's a parallel with like the basketball tournaments that we all see where there's two teams playing. Only one of them is gonna be the winner. So the same thing goes on with your decision-making. Often it's about deciding not only do you love it and do you use it, and thinking about not only when might I use it again, which is one of the things that kind of undermines our decision-making, but if I love it and use it enough, am I done with it? Because you could still love it and use it and let it go. So um, just think about a decluttering technique that makes you feel comfortable with the decisions you're making, because it's that feeling of success that's going to empower you. Now you might've gotten stuck in a move where you didn't get completely unpacked. And surprise, there's a lot of things that still need to be unpacked for you. So when you finished your move, there's usually this 10% of things that are left to unpack. 
take your time unpacking them. Don't feel like you're in a rush, but go back around and be sure that you've assigned functional spaces to the things you've unpacked. Sometimes I'll get to people's homes and even though every box is unpacked, they still feel disorganized because in their rush to unpack and get everything out, they haven't really thought through where is the point of use of where an item would go. So think about what's most functional for you and also where would you use a certain item in a certain space. Now, life transitions are happening way faster than they used to. It used to be a good 10 to 15 years between life transitions. And now life transitions happen within three year segments, which is quite surprising to all of us, isn't it? That how quickly life transitions are happening. Not only are we in the sandwich generation because many of us are taking care of children and parents, but there's so many other catastrophes that are befalling us right now. Where I live in Houston, Texas, we've had floods, we've had hurricanes. So lots of those things impact your life and how you're living it. So as you're moving forward after a life transition, you're often redefining, what do I need? What do I use? So let that sense of empowerment wash over your editing and what you're decluttering. And then when you're ready to let go of things, there's lots of wonderful resources that will come get them from you. Like in our community, we have several Habitat for Humanity, people that, you know, trucks will come to your house. We have local philanthropies that are benefiting lots of need in our community. So think about editing with your new purpose in mind. And finally, it's really beneficial having a professional that's a certified professional organizer come in and help you because what you don't see might be something that your certified professional organizer sees and can give you not only some insight, but a boost, motivate you. Also, a lot of times what I see with my clients is they're actually being way more successful than they give themselves credit for. And as a result, my being in their space is affirming a lot of the good decisions and helping them tweak some of the things that they've gotten stuck on. So inviting a professional in is definitely a leap of faith. I mean, sometimes I like to say, we met on the internet. Now, how crazy is that? But the certified professional organizer has a code of ethics where we will only be working with you if we are qualified. We also are very safe and trustworthy and you can um, be assured because of our code of ethics, we're working with your best interest in mind. So one of my favorite topics to talk about is families and household management. And you know, families are all different in America right now and throughout the world. Sometimes your family is you and your cat. Sometimes it's you and your partner and a blended family. The new American family looks like a lot of different things. And so I love empowering families to communicate better and to work more cohesively as a team. So one of the things I find is there's just a lot of laundry and dates and information that is swirling around the new family. And that's what I call household management. It's figuring out ways and tools that will help you not only manage what's going on, but thrive in what's going on. So when there's a lot of tools such as a family calendar, a family responsibility chart, it helps everybody know what's my assignment, who am I working with, and how do I get this job done? Also, it really prevents having people have disagreements about why isn't my shirt for my band uniform out of the laundry right now? Who's making dinner? And also, when's the trash going to be put out? It's stinky in there. So having all of these responsibilities assigned and orderly through what I call a family meeting, which is a fun time for people to come together with their calendars, talk about what's going on this week, project into the future and talk about, oh, what's our next family vacation going to be like? And then just share the dates that are going on that week. That family meeting goes a long way, even if it's just you and your cat. Believe me, everybody benefits from the time spent getting organized this way. It's also a perfect time to implement some simple systems and talk about what I call standard operating procedures. 
which might sound a bit goofy, but it's really important. So when is dinner done? Like when do people leave the kitchen? What does cleanup in the kitchen look like? Who's responsible for the dishes if one person does the cooking? So these are all conversations to have. There's no one answer. It's what you as a family come together cohesively and communicate about, like what does this look like every day? And what's the special treat that comes at the end of this family meeting? So for many families, that treat is taking a walk together, going um, outside to play a, ball, a game of ball, taking a bike ride, having a special family um, food that they want to share. So when you're establishing your family meeting, think about the routines and systems you wanna put into place in your family, what tools you're gonna need. One of my clients found an amazing family calendar. It's loose sight. It's the size of a, of a large television and everybody gets to write on it with dry erase pen. So there's, and our Google calendar, it's just in our palm every day because every single one of us has a phone. Our kids likely have a smartphone now too. So it's easy for all of us to stay connected, share the information that has to do with important dates, and then also work on family responsibilities together. It's a lot more fun when you work as a team. It's also important sometimes to bring a professional in. This is one of my favorite things with one of my clients is we have her weekly family meeting when I come and we all sit together on her big sofa. We have famous in Texas kolaches to eat for breakfast. So the kids are all super excited. It's all about food. And then we go through everybody's weekly calendar, which of course is a lot of dates, you know, if your kids are involved in more than one activity, you know just how many dates have come into email, but you still need to confirm. And then at the end of our meeting, we usually spend time like having time with a board game. So that's where a professional can kind of not only get you started so that you know, how do I run my family meeting and what are the pieces and who needs to be involved and what time should I set the meeting, but also just man manages sometimes when there's disagreement and how do we come to a common, a common agreement on what we need to accomplish this week and what's the priorities? Because we all have lots of great stuff going on with our families and our kids, but sometimes it can be overwhelming still. So unfortunately we do have to spend a few minutes on paper management. This is going to be your least favorite, but maybe most important segment of our time together. So one of the first things I talk about is um, implementing strategies to find papers quickly because there's nothing more frustrating. So I definitely segment out important papers. And those are the papers that you know to be um, birth certificates, marriage, uh, divorce, adoption. All of those important papers need a specific home. Sometimes that's in a safe, sometimes that's in a file. Um, for people who want to take these important papers with them, we need to put them in something portable. A portable fireproof safe is often what is a good option. Um, we want to customize your paper flow. Now, I come across people who definitely think there's like a perfect way to do paperwork. There is not. The perfect way is whenever it gets it done. So I want you to think like the easiest way for you to do your paper. So if you have what I call a command center, which is a space in your home, which collects all the papers to start with, so those are the papers your kids bring in, it's the mail, it's all sorts of papers that have come into your house. And I put that in what I call an unprocessed basket. So you may be the kind of person that only gets to that unprocessed basket once a week, which is great. At that time, you wanna look in the papers and divide them into the categories. And that's where a command center can be super helpful. Command center can look like wall pockets on a wall. It can look like a desktop sorter. The categories usually have to do with paying a bill because we still have bills that come in that way. Action, those are the list of things that need to be done. And then the remnants, which are filing. And often what I find with my clients is they've gotten really good at getting to the categories. And then this is all spread out on their dinner table and dinner happens. And then all of a sudden they're uh, putting all their papers back together. So it's really defeating. If you have a specific spot for filing, your filing can be as simple as just a box that's marked 2022. Nobody said that we're going to have to have categories that go into a file cabinet or notebooks or anything complex. But if you want to make the simplest choice with your paperwork and paper flow is just have a simple box. If you wanna divide it into categories, I keep it really broad. 
It's about home and auto is one category. Personal, which has to do with all the people, all the living things. That's um, your veterinary um, information for your pet. That's your medical records, your kids' medical records. That's the work history. That's the um, spiritual place you go to worship. So anything to do with people. So personal is the second category. The third category is finance, and it's all about the money. So in that group, we have banks, credit unions, retirement, investment, anything, life insurance. So um, when you think about the broad categories to create your workflow, it makes it much simpler to think about how do I want to find things later? Um, and then I think the easiest record retention schedule to find is the one that aligns with our taxes. So typically this time of year is a good time to go through and know what do I want to keep? And your personal accountant is one of those people that's going to help you know how long do I keep it and what do I keep? So in this case, there's a lot of professionals that could be helpful. Not only your certified professional organizer who's gonna help you get organized, but your bookkeeper, your tax accountant, even your lawyer are the professionals that you wanna to refer to personally about the different record retention schedule for your family. And I will tell you, I also find people are doing a lot of um, paperwork for other people in their family, like a older parent. Um, so you might have more than one set of documents you're keeping up with, or even a small business or a large business. So bringing in a professional really helps because then they'll help you sort through the paper and create a system that works best for you. So one of my other favorite topics is time management because we all know we never have enough time to do the things we love and we always have too much on our plate to get everything done. I'm a big, big fan of any kind of planner, whether that's a paper planner, a digital planner, just be sure that it's a good fit for the way you think about time. So paper planners are definitely for people who are highly visual because we like to see what's going on. Digital planners work more for people who are auditory and love the um, aesthetic of reminders that are um, coming through those different dings and chirps that we hear. And then there's those of us who like the hybrid system, I like to call it, which is paper and digital combined because so many things are on our computer that we have to do right away that we need the link there and the reminder there. And so thinking about customizing your system to the way you think and the way you work, but just be sure you choose a tool that you really love. You also wanna think about a task management system that works for you. So those are the list of things. So it's not only that you have a planner that has dates and times, you also have a list and there's lots of fabulous apps that help us with this list. Many of my clients use the Notes app, which is super easy to use, or they use the Reminders app. All of these things are kind of built into your phones, but there's also apps that people use that um, frequently I find people using something called Toodle Do. So just be searching the apps that come into your realm, play with them a little, don't try every app simultaneously. We love shiny, right? We like something new. We think it's going to be the, the end all be all, but we really know that we just need to drill down into consistent use of whatever the app is. And then tied in with our time management are these routines and delegation and automation. So the routines of what day do we empty the, um, the refrigerator correlates with what day does the trash go out. Um, what days do, how can we delegate things around our house? So some of us choose to delegate by having someone come clean our house or mow our lawn or do our laundry. Um, so there's lots of really creative ways to delegate right now. There's lots of ways that we can find people who can help us. And then the automation of online tools, such as our bill paying and grocery shopping. Um, and then I've been finding lots of ways that people are being incredibly creative with you know, their apps in general and what they're using to, to delegate and automate. But all of this flows into this work-life integration because our real goal is to have more time for the things we love and the people we love rather than spending time on the things that we know have to be done, but what's the simplest, easiest way to get them done? So 
you know, I love um, bringing in a professional. I, my motto in life is build a bigger team. And that bigger team is a lot of different people. I personally, this morning was talking with my accountant about something new that cropped up. And I refer to that person as we both speak English rather than accounting. So think about the people who can be on your team that are the professionals that you need that are trusted and that you can rely on to ask for help without feeling uncomfortable. There's lots of books and websites, um, podcasts. One of my favorite things to listen to is all different educational resources on podcasts. Um, some of my favorite books, there's so many. Um, the Magic of Tidying Up has been a favorite for a long time. Then there's um, Julie Morgan Stern's Organizing from the Inside Out. Um, I encourage you to visit our National Association website to find help and you can see certified professional organizers. It's napo.net, napo.net. And investing in a professional organizer. It's the best gift you can ever give yourself. I know there's lots of birthdays and holidays coming up. And frequently, I am the birthday surprise that everybody loves. Because it's not only the self-care that you're giving yourself, it's also investing in being smarter and working less, but working smarter, not harder. So I really encourage you to look around for the professional organizers and certified professional organizers that are in your community. Then lots of us do virtual work. That's one of my favorite things. The world has opened up to the fact that virtual professional organizers, virtual productivity consultants, virtual coaches, we're all here for you. So reach out. Um, there's all certifications in these different arenas of professional organizing. There's daily money managers. There's many of us who can help you not only get started, but reach your goals. So I want you to go back to your why. Why organizing your space and time will make a difference. And since we've had this time together, maybe there are some new insights that really reinforce now's the time to reach out and build a bigger team yourself. All right, I'm going to go ahead and open up uh, the chat now. If you have some questions for Ellen, go ahead and put those in there. I do have some questions that we've already compiled and we want to go ahead and get those started. Uh, can you talk a little bit about, you talked a lot about routines. Can you talk a little bit about uh, what a daily routine in the morning might look like? Uh, just say if you have a family with kids that are going to school. So first of all, I want to say a productive and organized day starts the night before because there's very little time in the morning to get as much done as you might think. So a great routine the night before means everybody has a bedtime, including the parents. So it's good to know what means that everyone can get a good night's rest. Then I'm a big proponent of people having alarm clocks in their room so that parents aren't the only ones having to wake up their kids. I know sometimes that's a tender moment. So that might be a good start is to wake your child up and then have some reinforcements with Alexa and Google Home, where there's routines that are going to be calling out to your child while you go back downstairs to get ready yourself. I really advise parents to get up a smidge earlier than their kids because it gives you alone time. It helps you gather your thoughts. It helps you get organized. It helps you have a few moments to do something where you're um, either meditating or having a spiritual time, things like that. The best mornings come with easy breakfasts that have protein. So some people are moving into like smoothies that they can throw into their blender or Nutribullet. And of course that starts because you had already ordered your groceries from your online grocery shopping. And then at the end of the day, I really love if they, people can have a family huddle right before you leave the house. So rather than everybody running out of the house with like craziness going on, everybody have a family hug. And that way you're reinforcing, hey, we're here for each other. We can do, we can do it. We're, we're all in this together. Okay, I have another question here. 
Um, I'm completely overwhelmed with my space, uh, my car, my office, my home. Uh, where do I start? What's one space that's going to make the most difference? I tell people to start with something that is self-care. So that might be your closet. It might be like your bathroom counter area. And that way, when you feel more in control and you're more together, it helps you conquer the rest of the areas in your house. Can you talk a little bit about um, storage units and kind of uh, what you, what they're useful for and what they're not? Yes, we have an unbelievable proliferation of storage units. I like to think of storage units for transition times. So in our family, um, we were transitioning our parents from one house to another. And, but we knew at that time our kids were going into college. So we wanted a short-term basis to store some of the things we thought they might find valuable in their first apartment. So that's a good transition time. Sometimes people are anxious to put a house on the market and they have too much um, and they don't have the time to declutter so that their house is ready for traffic for showing. So that's a good use of storage units. Storage units can also be um, good for seasonal items. I've seen some of my clients don't want to store some of their very large seasonal items. And so they have long-term storage for those items. I find that people um, do use storage units in a pinch to try to be a little bit more reflective about what your goal is with the items that are in in the storage and the value of them so that if they're only valued at a certain amount, is it worth putting them into storage? And if it's paperwork, because I have seen a lot of paperwork in people's storage, try to think of your paperwork as a treasure hunt as opposed to an organizational strategy. I'm in there looking for certain things in this paperwork. I don't need to keep it all. All right, here's another question. Uh, what about if you have a spouse that is adverse to uh, the organization efforts you try to make? So I am a big fan of modeling. And you're not only modeling being organized, you're modeling being in charge, you have serenity, you know what your day looks like. So it's really hard to convince someone, but when they see you having those things going on in your life, just the peace of mind is what's really important to people right now. And so, um, and you know, also if they see you working with a professional, sometimes that empowers them to decide that I need to work with a professional also. I have another question here. Um, what about keeping things for sentimental reasons like old papers or mementos? So I'm a big fan of keeping sentimental things, actually. I think that everyone needs to have a keepsake box. But I also think that there's some things that can become photos and photo albums so we don't have to keep the thing. And I'm seeing that more and more. Like a family that I work with had a series of trophies. The mom was um, in a sport in high school. And she still had those trophies as a 40-year-old. And they were really important to her. But what we did is we took photos of them and made them a photo album. So I think definitely keep what's really important and everyone have a keepsake box, but at the same time, know that there's other ways to have those keepsakes. All right, we have time for one or two more questions here. Um, what's the best way to, to uh, start getting organized? Do you need to dedicate like a whole weekend to say clean something out? Or can you do it little by little? Um, the Marie the Kondo, uh, I'm sorry, I'll, I'll just go ahead. You go for it. No, go ahead. Oh, it's just that uh, this particular uh, question says the Marie Kondo method seems like it would take forever. I am a big fan of baby steps, small bites. So I do feel like people never have a real good sense of how long is this gonna take? And until you get started doing it, it might be quicker and it might be longer. So if you write it on your calendar and make an appointment with yourself is a good first step. And that way, you know, I'm dedicating 
a couple of hours. I never tell people to spend like, okay, I'm spending the next two weeks. I'm going on vacation and I'm going to spend two weeks organizing my house. No. What I want you to do is think about the baby steps. What is the smallest amount of time you can dedicate to get the most impact? And then the other thing is by starting small, you're really feeling a lot more confident. So, um, and even little small things like putting a um, bag in your closet. So when you cast off something you decided not to wear because I never liked that color, it never looked good on me. Oh, I've worn it a hundred times and it's got all ratty. It just goes right in the bag. So the little baby steps and have a bag throughout your house for the rest of your family members and have them release things as they make the decision rather than making a lot of decisions in an entire weekend, which can be not only overwhelming in itself, but just, you know, exhausting. So. All right. We did have one more question here, but it was about uh, a question that I gotten already twice. And that's just general information that we did get uh, people asking, can we get a copy of this recording? And we will be sending that out to attendees. Look for an email soon with a link to the replay of this event. We'll also put it on our website at advicechaser.com. Well, um, Ellen, I believe that's all the time we have today. And I want to thank you so much for being here. Such great information you've shared with our attendees. I'm going to go ahead and put up your picture here again so people can see that. Um, we want to thank everyone for attending and for the organizations that have made this, uh, this webinar possible today. And like I said, we will uh, send out a, a replay link to our attendees as well. Here at Advice Chaser, we're all about helping you find a financial advisor who's a great fit for your life and your financial questions. Our matching service is free to you and every one of our advisor partners has committed to offer a free initial consultation to anyone we introduce them to. Find out more by going to advicechaser.com and clicking on the link to find an advisor. Once again, from Advice Chaser, thank you so much for coming and we will see you at another webinar soon. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you.